So welcome to this tutorial on Karl Marx, in which we will be looking at his theory of religion. So Marx was a German philosopher and father of Marxist theory, who we know posited the notion that the history of society is one of class struggle between the oppressed and the oppressor. There's much we could talk about concerning Marx, from his notion, for example, of history to his materialist ontology, his view of the state and more. And although we know Marx primarily for his critique of capitalism, we also find in him important ideas concerning the role and function of religion. This will be of interest to us here. So to begin with some background, Marx accepted Christianity conventionally during his school and youth days. So he accepted conventional, conventional Christian beliefs such as pertaining to Jesus, God and the notion of sin. In fact, one of his early papers was on Christian theology. But Marx later adopted an outright rejection of Christian belief on philosophical grounds while attending the University of Berlin. Marx studied law, but he was also fascinated with philosophy, and he was attracted to a group called the Young Hegelians. There, Marx was introduced to the philosophy of George Hegel, and became part of the group called the Doctor Club. This group consisted of high school teachers, university lecturers, and several reputable academics. We find in it the likes of Bruno Bauer, a theology lecturer. We have the history teacher Cole Koppen, and the philosopher Ludwig Feuerbach. This group met in a small cafe and in private rooms where they often applied philosophy to re religious ideas and theology. There was much promoting of religious skepticism, especially skepticism over Christian beliefs. Feuerbach, for example, argued that the divine and God were a projection of ideal traits that human beings extrapolated from the natural world. Essentially, God was no more than the extrapolated qualities found in human nature. One of Marx's earliest critiques of re religion was that it is not to be considered essential to the survival of the state as some were suggesting. He argued that the Prussian state is not based on Christianity and thus cannot be, and thus it cannot be considered the theocratic in any sense. Marx nonetheless saw how the police and authorities protected and ensured the survival of Christianity, which he called the religion of rule. He writes that, quote, the religion of rule is nothing but the religion of rule, the cult of the government's will. After the year 1843, Marx came to increasingly appreciate the philosophical critiques of Christianity by David Strauss, Bauer, and Feuerbach. He looked favorably upon the skepticism promoted by these thinkers. In his words, Marx writes that, quote, the most capable and consistent section of Protestant theologians has maintained that Christianity cannot be reconciled with reason. To Marx, the philosophical critiques of the Christian beliefs demonstrated that Christianity is indeed disputable. Marx also claimed that the religion should not be that religion itself should not be beyond criticism, and that criticizing religious ideas should never be considered out of bounds. We see Marx's atheistic disposition expressed in his view that religion is little, little more than the fantastic realization of human essence, which has no true reality. Or, more fully, as Marx writes, the only service which can be rendered to God today is to de declare atheism a compulsory article of faith and to prohibit religion generally. Marx famously claimed religion to be the opium of the masses. He sees religion as constituting an illusory happiness of the people because it causes people to flee from the real world into a comforting illusion. As an illusion, Religion is a lived false consciousness based upon a false perception and interpretation of reality. Although false, religion does indeed arise out of a human need with a basis in reality. Marx captures this when he calls religion the reflex of the real world, which means that religion is a reflection of a real, tangible component of human experience. But what human experience is he referring to? He is referring to the experience of exploitation. Religion exists because, society, because of society's inequities, such as the exploitation and oppression people experience under the capitalist regime. 
there are many such struggles that the exploited people experience under the capitalist system that might lead them to religion. There are struggles over wages and the reality of working for low pay. There's having to sell one's labor at the lowest possible price in order to find employment, especially as new methods of production and machinery were rendering skills worthless. There's also this low-skilled labor and alienation from the goods one produces. This all leads Marx to suggest that religion is the expression of real suffering that provides solace for the oppressed. Further, religion also survives because the ruling social class encourages its preaching, especially Christianity given its ethic of submission. Finally, the state also protects religion through force and censorship. Marx also sees religion as alienating. It is alienating because it always places the destiny of human beings under the control of forces that are not human. Because it places human destiny in the hands of non-human forces, religion can never have a legitimate place in any revolution. This is because religion's priority lies not with the material world, but with the spiritual world. Christianity, for example, focus, focuses primarily on the transcendent and the affairs of the next world rather than on this world. Religion has no place in revolution, according to Marx. We can offer several criticisms of Marx's theory of religion. Perhaps most problematic is that Marx had a very limited understanding of religion despite his various strong claims about it. What he knew of religion would not have extended much beyond Christianity, especially the Christianity of the state, and perhaps a little bit of Judaism. Can one really make such sweeping claims about religion, such as why people are religious, based on such a limited knowledge? Many would argue not. We must also remember that Marx was theorizing in a time when statistical data was unavailable. We in the modern age are simply fortunate, especially sociologists are fortunate, to have so much data to work with. Some argue that in light of this, Marx's use of the terms Christianity and Judaism are ill-conceived constructs. Second, it's not at all clear that Marx's theory of religion predicated on its emergence from suffering and oppression is necessarily applicable to religions of other contexts. Marx's theory might have explained some aspects of Christianity in Germany at his time of writing, but we might wonder if if his theory explains the religiosity of the Taoists or the Confucian, Confucians living in China a thousand years earlier or of the Zen Buddhists and Shintoists in contemporary Japan. Again, this is very debatable. Third, Marx made much about, much about religions focusing on the transcendent and the affairs of the next world rather than on this world. This is why religion has no place in revolution. But it could be argued that this is not necessarily obvious. For example, Christianity, despite its sophisticated doctrines pertaining to the afterlife, does place focus on the affairs of this world, as many Christians would argue. Or we might consider Confucianism, which is much about self-cultivation and maintaining beneficial relationships with others in society. Confucianism seeks to promote education and establish a state based on the values of diligence, morality, sincerity, and compassion, especially in leadership. This at least shows that it is not clear how Marxist theory of, theory of religion would apply to religions of other than Christianity and of other contexts. These several criticisms lead, should lead us to hold some of Marx's views tentatively especially as it pertains to his theory of religion.